Hey everybody, welcome back. Okay, so in this video we're going to actually calculate one of these um, margins of error. And um, before we scroll down to this word problem, because I know you guys are having to watch a video here and you have to kind of go back and forth. Um, um, when we read this word problem, what, in, in statistics everything's a word problem, right? Um, we need to uh, look for these variables, all right? As we read, we're going to be looking for the sample size population sample size we're going to be looking at um, looking for a sample standard deviation we're going to look for the z value so these are the three things I'm looking for and I'll we'll highlight them as we find them and uh, just keeping in mind that that's what we're looking for so let's come down here and take a look at this problem here's how one of them would look all right so this is a study of local high school um, a study of a local high school tried to determine the mean number of text messages that each student sent per day. All right, the study the study, study surveyed a random sample of 75 students in the high school and found a mean of 186 messages sent per day with a standard deviation of 70 messages. At the 95% confidence level, find the margin of error for the mean round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so they're, they're explicitly giving you everything in here. It's just a matter of just plugging stuff into a formula. So let's go through and just highlight things that are important. That's 75. What is 75? That's an important number. A random sample of 75 students. That is N. So we know what N is. Um, we found a mean of 186. There's Now we're going to call this X bar in this video. There's X bar. That's your mean. Um, standard deviation, there's S. Right, so they're giving me all this information. And there's your Z star. Go to your table, and I think you'll find 1.96 corresponds to the 95% confidence um, level. Okay, and uh, now, since we've extracted this information, and that's what you've got to do when you read this block of text, you have to be scanning for these specific items, okay? Now it's just a matter of plugging this into your formula, and that's that's how you would calculate this margin of error. So let's let's throw it into the formula. In fact, you know what? I think we might as well just go straight to the calculator, right? All right. So to do this, I would say, well, we're going to calculate one point nine six. And just in case you're wondering where I got that from. You'll consult your table. They wanted a 95% confidence level. There's that 1.96 for that Z star, okay? So that's no, it's not a mystery. That's where it's coming from. So there's your 1.96. Okay, I gotta be kind of careful here. I've got a um I've got a I'm gonna use parentheses here. And I think I'm just gonna put in one of these templates. Oh, I'm sitting here clicking my key. I keep forgetting that. You got to push the button literally. Um, anyway, um, so what what's next? We have got um, the sample standard deviation, which we said was seventy. It goes up top here, and I'm gonna come down here and put in the square root of the population sample, which was seventy-five. Come on out of there, and we'll close that parenthesis. And we'll get us a calculation here. So it says 15.84. Um, so we would write that down. So about 15.84. So let's see. We'll say approximately. Um, was it really approximately? So we'll just write 15.84. 15.84. All right, let's make sure we're doing the thing. It says round to the nearest whole number. So we would say it's approximately six. So approximately um, 16, right? So what we're saying here is that this mean, the true mean of text messages sent, um, is within 16 of the 186. Remember that 186 was found from a sample. That's not the actual true mean of the whole school. So 
this 95, we're, we could state this, we're 95% confident, confident that the true mean lives within 16 units either direction of this 186. So a person could construct a confidence interval from this, right? A confidence interval, a confidence interval would be um, like this. We would take in, um, I think that what they're going to use for you guys, are, they're using like parentheses here, a range of numbers. On the bottom end of that number, you'd have to subtract 16. Because remember, this, this mean, you're going to be on either side of it. You're within 16 in two different directions. But you could be below at 16 units, or you could be above 16 units. So you're 95% confident that it lives between 170, and um, we need 16 plus the 186, which is going to give you 202. So that would be a confidence interval that you would get um, from using your margin of error. So now you would have to, you could say that, you're 95% confident that the true mean lives between 170 and 202. You don't know exactly what it is, but that's as best you could do. Okay? Anyway, um, this should be good enough to get you through the Delta Math. Oh, uh, one thing I will warn you about. All right. I found this, too. Um, delta Math, when they do a 95% confidence um, interval, they use 2 instead of um, 1.96 for Z bar or Z star. Um, I don't know why they're doing that, honestly. I guess they've rounded way up and done a pretty... Uh, but anywhere you look, it's 1.96 usually. But uh, beware, um, Delta Math is using 2 for the 1.96. And it does change your calculation slightly. So if you wanted to just to see what I'm talking about here, um, we wanted to go back up here and recalculate this using the delta math approximation for 1.96, which I don't know why they don't just use 1.96, but they didn't. So um, we would say, let's put a 2 here and delete these out. And this is how delta math calculating this. Now look, it's a pretty big difference. You get 16.16, but when you round to the nearest 100 or ne nearest whole number, you're still getting that 16. But I'd, I would just use the 2 for their problems, but keep in mind that's not generally um, what's used. I think that that's that table I gave you is more accurate. Anyway, I hope this helps you, and um, I'll see you in the next video. We're going to talk about binomial probability distributions, and um, see you there.